Hello, it's Kristen from Crossing Timbers Equine. In this educational video, we're going to discuss the tools needed and how to use the tools for grooming our horses when we're getting ready to ride or just to give them a nice grooming and clean them up. We're gonna use our curry comb, our hard brush, our soft brush, and then pick out their feet. The first brush we're gonna use is gonna be our curry comb. The curry combs are usually made of a harder rubber material, usually in the shape of an oval. Curry combs come in a bazillion different shapes and sizes. You just need to find what works for you and what your horse prefers. Some horses may prefer more of a nubby curry comb, giving more of a massage experience to them, well, some of them may like a more low profile curry comb that doesn't interfere or get into their skin if they're thin skinned. After we do the curry comb, we're gonna to wanna to brush with the hard brush. Just like the name implies, the bristles are hard and when you rub your hand over them, they're gonna give you a little picky hard feeling to them. We're gonna use the hard brush on the big areas of their body, their neck, their barrel, their butt, and down through their legs. We wanna refrain from using the hard brush on their faces because the bristles can be rough on their face. After you finish brushing their whole body with the hard brush, the last brush you're gonna use is the soft brush. The soft brush, again, just like the name implies, has soft bristles. So when you run your fingers over that brush, your hands should just kind of sink into that brush with a nice soft feeling. The soft brush is our finishing brush. That's gonna clean up any hair or dirt or debris that the hard brush has left behind. The soft brush can be used on their face, around their ears, and on their legs. Because of the soft bristles, they don't mind the feel of the brush on their face. Our last and most important step is to pick out their feet. It's imperative that you pick out their feet before every ride. You want to make sure that their feet are clean from any rocks or sticks or stones that may make them uncomfortable while they're working for you. It's also a good idea to pick out their feet to get out any manure or dirt that may be in their feet so that you can help prevent diseases like thrush or white line disease. There are a number of different hoof picks that you can use. It all goes down to your preference and what you feel comfortable with. Some of them have the pick and the brush, and some of them are just the pick. As with a lot of horse products, there's a variety of different combs and brushes that you can use when brushing their mane and their tail. Part of it comes down to owner preference, and some of it comes down to what your horse's mane and tail works better with. Some that are thicker will do better with a comb, and the thinner ones may work just fine with a brush. When grooming and working around our horses, it's very important to remember safety for us and for them. You want to make sure that they're tied at a level where they can't get their head down and possibly get a leg up over the top of the lead rope and they can't get their head down and stuck underneath the lead rope. I prefer to use the clip as my preferred tying way. If you don't use the clip or some sort of a tie blocker or tying device, you want to make sure that you use your quick release knot. That way, if your horse has any problems or they set back, you have a quick, easy way to let them free. When moving around the horse, if I'm not talking where you can see their ears following and moving, 
you want to make sure you have a hand on them somewhere so that they can feel where you're at. Now I'm, I'm only going to stand back here for informational purposes only. You never want to stand directly behind your horse. No matter what, no matter how docile they are, there's always the chance that they can kick you. When you stand right back here, if their head is facing completely forward, you are in a blind spot. They cannot see you back here. You can tell by looking at Cat's ears that he can hear me back here and he can also feel me. So every time I walk back behind a horse, I'm gonna have a hand or an arm or an elbow on them all the way around so they can feel me cross over. And I'm also going to say something like, hey, Bubs, back here, what's up? Doesn't matter, you could say banana or orange, whatever you wanna say, put a hand on them, run that hand across the back, and then let them know you're back here by saying something out loud. If you do not feel comfortable enough being this close to your horse's bum, then you want to make sure that you come out far enough that you completely avoid their kicking area. If you are about an arm's length away, this is the most dangerous spot you can be because this is where you're going to get a full impact from that leg and from that kick. So you want to make sure that you can completely avoid those hind legs or that you're close enough that if they were to kick you that you would only get a small pop because they wouldn't have very much force back behind that kick. When a horse is hard tied to a wall or a post we want to make sure that we never duck under or in between to get to the other side. We always want to make sure that we go back around instead of ducking underneath their head and their neck. If your horse were to set back, they'd immediately come forward when they hit the end of that lead rope and you could get injured by that horse smushing you in between them and the wall. Now we're gonna start with our curry comb. When we use our curry combs, we're gonna use it in a circular motion across their body. Remember that the curry comb is going to be used on their neck, their barrel, their bum, and just down to their knee on their leg. Most curry combs are made of too hard of a substance to be used on the tender areas below their knee on their leg. We're going to use that curry comb in big sweeping circles. The purpose of using this curry comb is to get up all the hair and dirt and debris that can be down and in their coat. It's very important to remember to clean up the whole area of the horse, but pay special extra attention to the area where the saddle is gonna sit and the area where your cinch is gonna sit. Now we're gonna proceed down through his whole body making sure that we get all his body, everything cleaned up. When I go to go to his other side, I'm gonna make sure that I keep my hand on him and he can feel me come over to this side. Then I'm gonna start up again at his neck and work my way down the rest of his body. After we finished grooming him with the curry comb, our next step is going to be to use our hard brush. Our hard brush we're going to want to use in short sweeping little strokes throughout their body. When I start up at his neck, I'm going to come down and lay out and smooth out all the hair that I roughed up with the curry comb. The hard brush is going to pull away any loose hair any dirt or debris that the curry comb loosened up. When I use the hard brush, I'm going to use small little flicking motions at the very end 
to help pull that dirt and hair off and away instead of just sliding it over the top and leaving it still sitting in their coat. Again, as I come to his bum, I've got a hand on him so he knows I'm back here and he can feel where I'm at and what I'm doing. When I cross over to this side again, I'm going to keep a hand on him all the way around so that he can tell where I'm at. Our last step is going to be our soft brush. Remember that you can use the soft brush anywhere on their body. If you're going to brush their head, make sure that you steer clear of their eyes and that you steer clear of their nostrils. You want to make sure that you're not putting any extra pressure on that soft brush and just using it to clean up their face. After I've got his face cleaned off, I'm going to use my soft brush, just like my hard brush, in sweeping strokes across his body. The soft brush is going to pick up any little hair or dirt that the hard brush may have left behind. Now that we've got our horses all groomed up using the curry comb, the hard brush, and the soft brush, now it's time to pick out their hooves. As with everything we do around horses, safety is our number one priority. So you want to make sure you're paying attention to where they are and what they're doing. You also want to make sure that you keep your feet far enough away from their hooves so they don't accidentally step on you. If you've ever had your toes stepped on before, you know that it hurts just a little bit. So when I ask him to pick up his front leg, I'm going to stand at his shoulder facing his bum. I'm going to run my hand down the back of his leg, past his knee to right above his fetlock. And I'm going to ask him to come up with that leg and hold it. If the horse needs to shift or readjust, if you can do it safely while holding the leg, go ahead and let him do it. If you need to, put that foot down, readjust them to where they're square or close to square, and then go back and ask for that hoof again. When I put the hoof down, I want to make sure that my feet are far enough out from underneath that I'm not going to get stepped on and I'm going to guide that hoof to the ground and let him set it down. Now that I have his hoof picked up, now it's time to clean it out. I want to make sure that I stay away from his frog, which is the central part of the hoof right here. I want to clean down through the frog grooves which is the grooves on either side of his frog. Once the hoof is cleaned out, you can see how they create a V in the hoof. I always want to make sure that I pick from the heel to the toe. On the off chance that he were to do something silly or I were to do something silly, I could stab him with the hoof pick. So I always want to make sure I pick from the, t the heel down to the toe. You can do some light scraping on the sole to get any dirt, any twigs, anything that's going to be in that hoof. If you are a little obsessive compulsive and you want to clean that hoof with the brush, you can just run the brush over the top of the hoof and make sure that it's nice and clean and there's nothing stuck in that hoof that we don't want him walking around with. Now that we have his front legs picked out, now it's time to move on to the hind legs. I'm going to stand with my shoulder next to his bum, 
This way I can feel any movement, left or right, forwards or backwards, through my shoulder that he's going to give me. I'm going to run my hand down the back of his leg, over his hock, down to right above the fetlock. Give just a little squeeze on that tendon and ask him to pick it up. I'm going to tuck my leg underneath his leg to help hold up this big rump of his that he's got. Some people, if you've ever had the chance to see your horse's hooves getting trimmed, this is a hold that farriers will use in order to trim their feet. So this is what I call the farrier's hold. If you find the right spot, you can, let, you can get the leg to just sit there and hang out for you. When it's time to put the foot down, I'm going to reach under his hock, support his leg, step out from underneath, and set it down. If by some chance you're going to pick up your horse's hoof and they want to kick out, if you have your leg underneath and supporting in that farrier's hold, chances are they will kick straight back out and you can back away and get out of the way. If you're afraid that your horse is going to cow kick or kick forward while you're picking up that hind leg, give yourself enough room, go nice and slow, and make sure that you keep yourself in the safest place possible in order to get that hind hoof picked up and cleaned out. Now that we've got his hind leg picked up, it's time to clean the back hoof. Again, I want to make sure that I stay only in the frog grooves and clean down through the hoof. I don't want to stab him in his frog because that's the soft, sensitive part of his hoof. Again, I'm going to do some light scraping on his sole, which is this big, hard area around the frog. I want to make sure that his feet are clear of any debris, any gunk, so that I don't have to worry about him trotting around or walking around with me on his back or just walking around in general and having any problems with his hoofs. Kat and I would like to thank you for watching our grooming basics video. For more information on Crossing Timbers, please visit our website at www.crossingtimbersequine.com. There you can find more information about our clinics, my virtual lessons, and much more.